What I had tried to do was to give some general introduction to set that loss within the background of the overall context of the railway. Uh, and uh, this was what the video was supposed to help us with. This was a map uh, to illustrate the uh, Thai Burma Railway, as the Japanese call it, the Death Railway, as the uh, British call it, and Australians, uh, usually because of the experiences of their prisoners of war. The railway still exists and it still operates. Uh, you can see uh, a junction of Ban Pong. Ban Pong is the junction of the uh, railway, the Death Railway, and the Thai Southern Railway Line, which was built by British, usually with a lot of Tamil labor, actually, and opened in 1912 to Bangkok. The purpose of the railway uh, was to link the pre-existing railway systems of Thailand with that of Burma, both of which, of course, have been built by the British. Um, the railway operated uh, until uh, a few years after the war, right through to the Three Pagoda Pass in Burma. This is the Tamil language uh, inscription that the, Jap the Japanese army uh, had made in, to memorialize the Tamils who never came back. You will notice that it has been destroyed or defects. Many of the inscriptions have. Uh, unfortunately, this was by Allied prisoners of war when they returned after the war to Kanchanabri, not really understanding very much about the situation of anybody except themselves, um, uh, considered the monument uh, more of Japan's dreadful behavior on the railway and threw stones at it. Um, other inscriptions uh, could be uh, restored, but I doubt that there is anybody in the Japanese Association of Thailand who look after the monument and who own the land that it's now very common. I doubt that there's anybody who speaks Tamil, and that's the reason why it still remains. Uh, here are the, you can see all the other languages involved. On the left, at the top, is Thai language. It's rather difficult to read because it's in the reform script adopted by Field Marshal Prime Minister Pibun uh, during his first administration. Uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the Thai language is the second down on the right. Um, the top two uh, photos are a mystery. The, the top two photos are of a Vietnamese language inscription, which quite clear, clearly, the existence of which means that Vietnamese were also involved as laborers on the railway. Nobody has ever written about them, nobody has ever found out about them, nobody knows who they are. Um, I will mention that uh, a Thai immigration official at the Burmese border the Three Pagoda Pass, once told me that uh, he, this particular man happened to speak the Vientian dialect of Laotian, uh, which is now the standard language of Laos, because he formerly worked for about 15 years in Nong Ha, which is on the border with Vientian. He said one day he was absolutely shocked because there was a delegation of about 10 to 15 people all speaking in Vientian dialect Lao, saying that they had been left behind in Burma after the, after the war and that they had been involved in the railway and they wanted to go home. But of course he's not a Burmese official, he was a Thai official. So there was nothing very much he could do about it. But one wonders what these people on the railway and how they were involved. There are many stories that we do not know. But the Vietnamese inscription clearly 
uh, indicates that there must have been Vietnamese labor involved. To go back to the Thai inscription, uh, we know about Thai labor. There was at least Thai labor were the first laborers to be used on the railway. Many of them were compulsory Chinese, Thai Chinese, who had been re relocated from the northern provinces uh, because they were considered dangerous. Um, and I, I, uh, somewhere I have the, uh, the total number of Thais involved is difficult to, um, I, I've got it written down here somewhere. It's difficult to ascertain because what happened when the Thais were involved, the Japanese contracted the labor, the, the gathering of labor to usually uh, Thai Chinese companies, ordinary companies, construction companies, uh, uh, to build the railway. And so they weren't even considered part of the Japanese thing. Uh, the companies had great difficulty in, 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 in finding labor. However, we do know, and we believe that there were many more, that there were supposed to be 12,000 uh, Chinese, uh, these will be Thai Chinese, uh, who were forcibly impressed into the railway to work directly under the Japanese. Uh, it's believed probably that the number of workers mobilized both privately and by the government must be in the region of 30 to 60,000. It was difficult to get laborers. And in December of 1942, it became impossible because there was an incident, and it's very famous and it is not written about hardly anywhere, where the Thai laborers attacked the Japanese in Bangkok. Um, the incident occurred uh, over a Japanese soldier slapping a Buddhist monk, a Thai monk, in the face. The Japanese army was uh, fond of slapping people in the face. They didn't realize, I think, what this might mean culturally to times. Uh, apparently, the uh, monk had tried to pass some cigarettes to the prisoners of war or something like that. When the, uh, when the Thai laborers heard that a monk had been assaulted in this way, that same night they gathered with stones and whatever weapons they could find, and an enormous incident occurred in Bang Bang Pong, um, which was never uh, really fully explained, but we do know that four Japanese were killed, including a Japanese military doctor uh, uh, and, and three other military personnel. Well, of course, the Japanese army was furious. Can you imagine laborers attacking the Japanese army? For Christ's sake, you know, it's just, just what The southern command of the Japanese army in Saigon demanded the execution of not only all involved, but of the monk. Um, and an almighty row involved. Prime Minister Pibun uh, carefully kept out of Bangkok so that the Japanese, he couldn't be made to do anything about it. Um, it, was, it, 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 it was a disaster uh, that was averted by Prime Minister Tojo in Tokyo appointing a sort of more peaceable head of the Bangkok garrison command, the man called Nakamura Akito, who's one of the, who was really appointed because of the Bangkok incident. So it's not just a little incident. This was this altered uh, the uh, picture of politics. After that, the Japanese, I suppose, thought that they had better not rely on Thai labor too much, uh, though they did still further up the line. Uh, so that, there's the Thais. We think 30 to 60,000, maybe more, we don't know. On the left is an inscription. 
is the inscription with which I'm, I'm sure you're familiar. Isn't that the Bahasa inscription, uh, the second from the left? And this becomes a very difficult problem. A corporal, uh, a Japanese corporal, and that's to say, uh, and I stress it's a corporal because if it, if it was a high officer, I'm sure he would have already received orders of what to tell the Allied soldiers when they returned. A mere corporal in logistics probably hadn't heard what he was supposed to, what, what the officers were supposed to say. He told uh, the British uh, commanding officer, uh, uh, Colonel Campbell of K Force, he told him in no uncertain terms. Um, uh, and that he, he was involved in logistics, he said he, that there were approximately 250,000 Malayans and 100,000 Javanese transported to work on the railway. Now, now this is an enormous figure. This is enormous. Um, with regard to uh, the rest of the inscription, you see under the Thai inscription, you have the an inscription that was supposed to paint or to, to look after the spirits of the uh, Allied prisoners. To the left again, a close-up of the Tamil inscription, and down at the bottom, a, a sort of poem. Uh, the two ones at the bottom. Uh, Japanese called Hanshi. Uh, Japanese language at that time, written language, was standard with Chinese. Uh, so this uh, sort of poem uh, about the, the, the horror of uh, resting after work and this sort of thing could apply to both Chinese and Japanese who were involved on the railway. So, I hope I'm not boring. Uh, I, this is all improvised. I, I know this was not never intended. So please bear with me. Um, my own interest in the railway began in 1990 uh, when I happened to be in Thailand and the friend said there's some bones in Kanchanapriya. I said, what do you mean there's some bones in Kanchanapriya? He said there's bones of workers on the railway. And I said, because, you know, I, I, I just saw the movie. Did, did, did any of you see the movie, The Bridge Over the River Kwai? Do you remember that? That's wonderful, because most young people have never, ever heard of it. Um, <laughs> uh, the, um, it used to be regularly broadcast in England at uh, around Christmas time. I don't know why these atrocious things are supposed to be <laughs> brought up at Christmas time. But around Christmas and New Year, we always have the bridge of the, over the River Kwai on the, on, 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 on the TV. Frankly, I was rather bored by it because of the repetition. You know, I was young at the time. And I found the Japanese were doing the same when I first went to Japan in 1970. But that was changed to Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, a Japanese movie about uh, the Japanese army and prisoners in Java that came out much later. But quite by all these were things, these sort of things were shown at Christmas and New Year, I don't know. But, uh, so in 1990, when my Thai friend said, bones, bones, come on, we must see the bones in Kanchanapuri. I, I, I assumed he meant prisoners of war. I had no idea what on earth he was talking about. Um, but it turned out that in 1990, uh, uh, a lady, uh, uh, living in the Panchanapuri area uh, have, have been troubled by ghosts for several years. There are ghosts everywhere in the Thailand. Everywhere. <laughs> uh, so if you, if you think your community's religions are sometimes a little superstitious, you should go to Thailand. They are absolutely everywhere. So anyway, she was tormented by ghosts ever since the war she claimed. She couldn't sleep at night and all this sort of thing because she knew, the mother knew, that this had been the uh, burial ground 
and maybe even a, a medical facility for Asian prisoners of war. And so to allay her fears in 1990, and I was told by uh, Mr. Christopher John that, this, that, 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 that a repetition has uh, occasionally occurred. In 1990, they excavated the fields in question and they produced the remains of 700, around 700 skeletons. Now this is just one tiny rice field, quite a long way out of the city. Prisoner of war accounts, some of the prisoners of war were concerned about the Asian laborers. They could see that they were in a worse condition than they were. Um, uh, state that there were several such burial grounds, medical facilities, camps, all around the Kanchanaburi area. We do not know how many bones are still hidden, and I think uh, Mr. Chandra mentioned uh, that this is perhaps one thing that we need to find out about. The lady in question said that she remembered, or the mother remembered, that some of the people who were thrown into the pit were not dead. Um, and this bears out testimony of earlier people. Uh, also, a Chinese uh, medical orderly from uh, Singapore uh, released an account not terribly long ago of his own experience, as one of which was being ordered to set fire uh, to uh, people, uh, the, the, the barracks housing workers who had come down with cholera. And they were chiefly Indonesian or Malayan workers. Uh, and, and that has been released quite recently in Singapore. So it is quite possible that some of the people thrown into this pit were not dead yet. Um, these were the sort of bones uh, of earth. Uh, sorry. And this is a, this was believed to be a skeleton of somebody not yet ten years old. Now this is another thing I want to just elaborate on the, the Tamil labor story. Uh, the abbot of Ban Pong Temple, which was the, 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 obviously a transition point for all these laborers, also confirms that the Tamils often brought their wives and families to the railway. I suppose it was, you know, a bit in the same way that they'd come to the British plantations. They thought they were going off in the propaganda of the Japanese to a similar uh, situation uh, in Thailand. And so they took their family. And so I don't think any other of the laborers' groups took their women and children. So I presume that this skeleton must be that of a Tamil child. Um, and there were other skeletons with bangles around the foot and, and, and things like that. So among these skeletons were many Tamil, former Tamil laborers. So I was, you know, this was not what I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see prisoners of war and things like that. Uh, and it was on that trip that I discovered the, in the monument by the Imperial Japanese Army with all these languages. And I thought, well, this is not, this is not what the movie was about. The movie wasn't about this. And I began slowly to realize that, in a sense, the, and, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, the railway has been hijacked by the Allied prisoners of war. Uh, sounds a bad word, but uh, what I mean to say is, as you know, the, the British, Australian, some American prisoners of war uh, were all enlisted men. They were all educated. They'd all under, gone through compulsory education. So they all could read and write. And they were able to recount their experiences or the survivors when they returned. But most of the Asian laborers were, of course, 
a litter of people rounded up in villages, fishermen, farmers, uh, occasionally uh, tramps from the cities. Uh, they would, of course, have their, some of them would have been able to write in their own languages, but nobody understood them. Uh, most of them, I think, were uneducated and illiterate. And it's a little bit, the experience has, it's a bit like uh, someone was mentioning Franz Hanoi to me the other day. It's a little bit how your, your confidence is totally uh, destroyed. Uh, I think the experience on the railway for the workers was much more disastrous and psychologically dangerous than that of the Allied prisoners. Why? Because when the Allied prisoners were sent from Changi or from places like that, to prisons like that, they went as units with their own divisions, with their own doctors, their own logistics personnel, even their own ministers. Uh, the military, whatever you might care to say about it, is at least a structure. But when these workers, and, and, and ones that I interviewed have confirmed this, when the workers, the laborers, were, were around, they were split up purposely by the Japanese. So I was talking with a, a laborer who will come up from Kalantan, and he told me that all his friends were taken to one place, uh, or, or to other places, and he and one or two were left with this group. They purposely split up the, the people. So how were any of the prisoners all disjointed and in different groups, and, and all their friends separated, with no common language? How could they even sort of complain about the redress of their grievances? It was impossible. Uh, and uh, I think that was this, this, they had no structure. They had no doctors. They had no. They had nobody to go and work for them. When they died, they were just put in holes. And medical treatment was more or less non-existent. Uh, occasionally, British and Australian prisoner of war doctors. Incidentally, Japanese soldiers would come to these doctors rather than their own Japanese doctors because they were regarded as better. That is also regarded important. Some of these doctors did occasionally try to help the laborers who were in separate but nearby camps. Um, so I, I, you know, this was not what the railway was about. And I became astonished at the extent to which it had been hijacked. And that's when I first began to hear of the Tamils. But as part of a much greater movement, of people. Uh, these are the sketches by a prisoner of war, a British prisoner of war, Ronald Searle. You may have, some, some of you may have heard of him. He became a famous cartoonist after the war. He's still alive somewhere in France, only just, I think. Uh, Ronald Searle uh, produced these uh, drawings, and you will see that there are obviously some Indian figures among his sketches that he took along the railway. Um, let me go on to the next slide. The presence of women and children is obviously being attested to, and this would be a Tamil thing. Now, as a matter of fact, Mr. Searle not only kindly let me use his illustrations, he even sent me a commemorative medal of the 50th, to mark the 50th anniversary of the railway because he was so touched that he was still uh, concerned and trying to work on the problem of the Asian laborers. Um, now, uh, to go back to the 250,000 Malayans 
This, anyway, that was the beginning of my, sorry, that was the beginning of my interest in the railway, and I ended up <coughs> taking my own Japanese students there uh, for about eight years on field trips. Um, and, and, and so, you know, I would continue uh, the, uh, uh, to, to the work at that time. Um, uh, this is another railway, <coughs> if you look at the map. Uh, this is uh, much further south, much nearer to, 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 uh, the, uh, than Malaya. It runs across the isthmus, uh, the Kra Isthmus, from Chumpon to the Kra Isthmus on the other side of the, of the, of the peninsula. And you will see it then goes down the Kra Isthmus, down this, this sort of river, and ends up at a place not far from the town, the Thai city of Renon. Uh, that was the terminus of the railway. After that, the goods were to be shipped by boat across to Victoria Point. So it's much further south than the railway. This was called the Kra Isthmus Railway and was the first railway to be built by the Japanese uh, in Thailand. Uh, the point of it for us is that uh, the estimates, and again they, 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 they are at least 60,000 to around 120,000 laborers, all brought from Malay. Uh, now, when I went down to that little terminal town, they, they were able to confirm to me that there were Chinese, so members of the Malayan Chinese community, uh, Tamils uh, and uh, Malayan, uh, Malays, so uh, uh, were involved in the building of the railway. The uh, railway, when it was completed, its station functions and everything were apparently staffed by Malays, probably from Kedah, Kalantan, that area. And some of these people must still exist. Uh, not many, but some of these things. Uh, so, this was the first railway that the Japanese built in Taiwan. Uh, it didn't operate long because it was very exposed to Allied bombing, and it was not very long, it's only about 90 kilo kilometers in length, because the, the, the uh, peninsula uh, of Thailand is very uh, narrow at that point. And this was the remnants. These photos were taken by a former member of the British Embassy in Bangkok who had been uh, repatriated under a diplomatic staff exchange program and was parachuted into the Chumpong area at the end of the war. Andrew Gilchrist, he could speak Thai. And this was the situation he found in the laborers' camps, even long after, uh, I think, after the Krakismus railway had been abandoned, the Japanese also tried to make uh, use of the laborers in other ways. It's not clear uh, you see a tunnel is there and uh, Please note the skin and bones look of people. These were people who were not necessarily ill. Uh, so that's the story of the Chumpo Railway. Uh, this is a Malay from Kalantan. He's lost his Malaysian citizenship. He's now a Thai citizen. Uh, he stayed behind after the railway. Uh, and he uh, uh, very kindly agreed to come and talk before my students. Uh, I think now he probably couldn't, this was quite some time ago. Uh, and he told of the terrible conditions and how he was uh, uh, separated from anybody else that he knew. Um, uh, after the war, uh, he didn't even hear of the so-called Allied repatriation. He didn't, he didn't even know these workers had left all over the railway. Uh, and he 
elected to stay in Thailand, it must have been very difficult to get papers and citizenship, it must have taken several years, and he married a Thai lady. He's now fine, uh, though I, I, I expect he's rather old, I know he's still alive, uh, I heard about him last year, and he has six very sturdy young sons uh, who make sure that he is able to go and visit his family in Galantan, relatives uh, at the year. Uh, this is uh, Lung Uncle Yu, as he is called in his family.